Hi folks, welcome back. 25th of July. Had a couple of days off to celebrate. I'm just going to spin you around. Our 30th wedding anniversary. And it rained <laughs> all the time. Anyway, it's been raining again this morning, but it's fared up now. So just this video is going to be a compilation of things. First of all, is this wonderful tree lily. That's in its third year now since planting. And it is just stunning. Absolutely superb, very pleased with that. And as I said, you've seen this bit before, but I can't help but show it again. This is our herbaceous border. Floxes, that variety of flocks is just coming out. And uh, we've had some ripen figs already. I'll just show you that. Um, you see all the roots in there now? I'm going to be potting that up very soon. Yeah, they're going to be early this year for sure. I've had two already and it's not even the end of July. And, uh, Rose again, I've got a couple of cabbages that I'm just trying, these are January King 3, just trying in buckets and uh, so far they're looking very healthy. And then the other thing that uh, I noticed when we came back is these apples um, just dropped off, which again is very early. And if you see, we've got our old problem back, bitter pit. And then I guess that'll be due to the 12 weeks of drought that we had. That's another example there, can you see that? All those black, sunken... Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut one open and just see how the pips are looking. So bear with me. So if you look at the pips, they're not really brown at all. There should be some brown indicating ripeness. And then if you look here, there's our old friend, the larvae of the um, codling moth, the apple maggot. And you can see inside, if I can just get this uh, in here where the, the, the poo, if you like, from the maggot, the, the frass. So it's tunnelled in somewhere, it looks like it, where the flower was and eating its way inside here. So I'm guessing that's probably the reason for the early drop so if you found fruits that's um, you know early I mean some yeah they are early I guess perhaps due to the hot weather but it's always worth just having a look and seeing if there's because you don't want to uh, be letting them survive you know to start off another brew generation so it's worth cutting the apple open and having a look okay let's move on to another topic Yeah, so while I'm up at home, these are a couple of the figs. This is brown turkey, variety brown turkey. And uh, these were picked yesterday. I've had one about, oh, I don't know, about a week before. So again, very, very early. Not usually uh, ripe till at least August, anyhow. So I think a good fortnight to three weeks early. I'll just pause and cut this small one open. Again, very ripe. I'm just going to eat that, folks. Oh my lord. Mmm. Incredibly sweet. Right, let's move on. So, another thing I wanted to show you was a gift from my mate Anthony over in France. He's done these tree labels for me. He has a. well. Some kind of printing machine that I don't know it's feels like a kind of waxy paper that doesn't rot or doesn't fade so he knows the varieties 
that I'm doing. I don't know what that's on there. But yeah, they're just brilliant. And he's he's put the rootstock MM106, that's mostly what I'm using these days. So they're brilliant. I'll be getting those on soon. Cheers on to doing it. And then uh, the other thing I need to do this morning really is I've got some more seed sowing for a um, just a late crop before um, it's too late so it's just time to get some more spinach in that's variety Lazo. I've been growing that for three or four years it's very very good I also want to get in some um, spring cabbage um, I was looking up at here for the seed packet can't find it so I'm assuming it must be on the plot but if, if not I'll have to rush out and get some but it's time for those to be sown. I also sown some uh, dwarf French bean seeds. I chitted them, so I'm not sure if they've come through yet. And I'll be doing a few more uh, next week again just to get a quick crop before the end of the season. Right, so we'll move on. A lot of ladybirds around this year. Are these the. Can you see that in there? And there's one kind of further up there, look. But there's a lot around. Anyway, <clears throat> I came to show you this uh, codly moth trap. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the camera and get this glue trap out and we'll, we'll have a look at uh, how many it's caught. There's a lot though. Alright, let's see if we can count up. So we've got one. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, so about 22, that gives an idea of, uh, that that's a heavy infestation, I suspect again it's down to the um, hot spell we had with those warm nights, they usually don't emerge until the temperature, nighttime temperature is at least 15 degrees C, and we certainly had those back in April, May, June, we certainly haven't had them now, but if, uh, if you do use these, now you need to replace putting a fresh um, trap because they have two to three broods a year. So you want to be, you know, if you've got, I mean, for me it's not as important because most of my apples get pressed for juice. So it's not really a problem. But if you have apples for storing, for eating, etc., then it's probably worthwhile putting out another monitoring trap. And you can just keep a, an eye on the degree of infestation and indication of uh, if, if you're going to spray when you need to spray. Well we're down on the plot uh, so yeah we've got this spinach this one's actually part of you so I'll sow that and I've sown some of this, uh, these radishes uh, what is it? Scarlet okay, like this. Scarlet Globe I've sown some of those, can't find any of the flat, um, spring cabbage, so clearly I'm delusional. <laughs> I'm going to have to rush out and buy some. Right, let's have a quick update. So this is a small greenhouse where the peppers, sweet uh, bell peppers are. On this side down here, at the end, and then coming up to about there, are King of the North. These were sent to me by Davy, Southpaw Davy. And then... I think these last half a dozen are giant bell peppers and the seed was kindly gifted to me from Willie Coleman over in Canada. And you can see that the ones from Willie is there flowering now. So they, because they were put in a bit later to be honest, otherwise I'm assuming they would be kind of the same as the King of the North. Which you've got a lot of flowers on. I'm just looking to see if I can find any... oh yeah! Da, da, da. 
<laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I tell you, I'm thrilled to bits. It might not seem a big deal to you guys who can grow peppers standing on your head, but it's the first time really for me and the fact that they've got peppers on is just quite awesome. I'm really chuffed at that. So I'll keep you updated. I'm just looking around and I can see that it is setting several fruits. Sorry about this, but I really am quite pleased. Quite pleased. That's an understatement. Look at that. Yeah, well chuffed. And uh, yeah, there's not much more growth on the ginger, but anyway, it, it's done something. And the strawberries, as I say, they've just been cropping for little and often, to be honest. For, oh, I don't know, a couple of months, I would guess, at least. Which is great. Right, let's go and have a look in the other greenhouse. Actually, just before we go into the other greenhouse, um, this is a Victoria plum. Uh, it's a young tree, I grafted it. I think this is in its third year, if I'm correct. You can see that I've just supported the branches a little bit because I say it's only a young tree and the weight of that fruit on there could potentially snap the branch, so that's why I've just supported it. Plenty of nice gr growth on these trees though. Right, let's go and have a look in here. You can see I put this uh, white wash stuff on. Cool glass, I think it's called, or something like that. Okay, um, just looking at these cucumbers now. Now when I came down yesterday, we actually had some sun yesterday, and all, all of them were kind of flopped, wilted. So I, I'm not really up on cucumbers. Can anybody tell me is that because they were watered? So is that um, heat, lack of ventilation that's causing that? I'm not sure. But there's tons of um, cucumbers on. You know, if you look down there, there's one there. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Going down the back there, eight. there's about a dozen cucumbers and still plenty of small ones and I'm trailing this one along the roof. So if anybody knows yeah, why they, why they uh, flop, uh, another thing I know is about uh, temperature fluctuation. Anyway, moving on, these are the, uh, the Wenzel, uh, like a beefsteak. There's not many on to be honest. But they're looking like they could turn into some quite nice tomatoes. Um, it's quite a big one down there. So not a huge crop, but should be nice. And these were the, again, they were from Southpaw. And these here are, um, what is it, Monster or something beef state from, again, from Willie Coleman. They look to be a bit bigger. Again, not a huge amount, but I'm really looking forward to trying them. And then over here are the the cherries that I saved from my own seed. Now, a subscriber pointed out to me quite rightly. I assumed that they were from, I think they were from Sweet 100, and I thought that was an heirloom, so they would come true. But he was quite quite right in saying um, they were a hybrid. So. I'm assuming therefore that the seed has reverted back to whatever was crossed to make Sweet 100. Uh, now the issue for me is, you can see these trusses are absolutely enormous. They're just enormous. There must be potentially a hundred fruits sort easily. So the question is for you guys, given that we're 54 degrees north, we don't get a lot of sun, should I be cutting some of these trusses off because I'm kind of thinking that um, if I allow the whole of them to set uh, it, they're not going to ripen that's what I'm worried about you know even so what this uh, this truss here this third truss up there are some beginning to set but you know look at the size of look at the size of this truss they're just enormous and I just noticed 
there's just one or two I don't know if you can make it out in the corner there just beginning to turn now and that's the first you know we're in the last nearly the last, last week of July so yeah should I the question is for you to our experts <coughs> should I thin some of the trusses out or just leave them let me know drop a comment down in the box below please and I'll, I'll be grateful for your advice right let's have a quick look outside so in the frame I've got the replacement um, cabbage and uh, kale for the stuff that went to seed in there is two multi-sown little pots of uh, radish and they were the chitted dwarf rent beans so no leaves showing yet but hopefully they will do soon and say so I'll be doing a few more next week uh, now we've had a little bit of heat with loads of rain to go with it the zucchini have really started growing and uh, there's plenty on um, we've been harvesting tons of them so courgette fritters um, zoodles here we come this is the row of the other row of radish that I did again that was scarlet globe the multi sown onions looking all right I think the one thing I've learned from this year is that really I should have thinned them down to two there was a clump of six or seven in each pot and so in future years I think I'll just leave two just for a slightly big, bigger bulb but if lots of smaller bulbs is fine they will definitely get used and in here this uh, patio squash let's cut one there No show on that one yet, but got to be hopeful, right? Dwarf French beans. I've been picking those like tons. There's just loads. Um, they've done really well. I don't know what's eating them. Maybe slugs. But they're cropping. You know, they're a great bean. Just save me on seed every year. I forget the variety now because it's quite a few years since I bought the original packet. But there's tons on there and those are the arctic prairie i've put them in too close for sure but uh, they've got tomatoes on see it wouldn't surprise me if i get blight in them to be honest in fact that might be a bit of blight down there there's some bigger ones down here so again i will grow these again but i just need to space them out a bit they're a bush type Carrots just pushing up the top of the mesh now. Uh, so, again, sweet candle in here, Autumn King 2 in here. I haven't tried any yet. This is my other double row of French beans, the leeks. You saw me plant, uh, transplant a few a couple of weeks ago, or something there, growing away quite nicely now. Oh yeah, I just want to show you the uh, these are brune shallots. I think they're it's difficult to sort of appreciate the size of that, but they're looking really good. And that was the first batch of multi-sown on onions that uh, I transplanted, so they're a bit bigger than the other one. Oh yeah, while we're here, I'll just move over and looks to me like I probably have some savoy cabbage to be cutting before so long there's a nice head form in there which is a lot earlier than I anticipated but I've got some uh, so I've sown some more so and some nice sorry about the some nice leeks I mean we could harvest those now if we wanted to but I'm just gonna leave them to grow on uh, don't keep this video too long. That's a variety of lettuce called Hildy 2. It's like a butterhead one, so I'll try another one. And these beets, because we've had plenty of rain, you, you know, they've, they've grown quickly. 
as opposed to the first lot I sowed which were short even though I was watering them every night they just didn't get the amount of water they needed and again there's these are leeks variety of mussel bur here peas I'm just allowing to I want seed off them so they don't look pretty but there's plenty of pods for seed on there again uh, the chard's still going strongly we've got one or two we've got quite a few bolted but there's, there's plenty of leaves for us to use and again this I mean look at the size of that that's crazy <laughs> but yeah no shortage of beetroot some of the stuff's absolutely enormous but it, it'll be tender because it's had the rain it's grown quickly and I've said before about the purple sprouting going to seed most of it not all of it so we've been you know harvesting that now thornless blackberry it's looking pretty good despite all the wind damage earlier on and sweet peas still going strong been cutting loads of those this discovery apple again I think very early 25th of July and you know they're not going to be far away and there is quite a bit of canker this year you see here so I'm going to have to carry out some kind of remedial work somewhere along the line probably after we harvest it the verbena is looking wonderful and when the sun's out it's just absolutely crammed you can see bees on there now uh, they just love it absolutely love it and tons of butterflies And you've seen the August squash, I won't bother that. You've seen the cordons. Uh, this rhubarb I transplanted. There's some pretty, really nice sticks on there. That's done well, although it's in the wrong place. These are the uh, Espalia cider apples. And uh, I've allowed, as you can see, quite a lot of fruit and we've got some nice extension growths on the arm again so I can just you know at the end of this start to bend that down at the, towards the end of the year and these sublaterals I can prune those back like I showed in my previous video that one looks as though it might go onto there that one onto there remove that one so again that one will make another a new leader. I've got one, two going that way, so I'll probably cut those out. So there's a bit bit of work to do on them, but they're growing all right. I don't know if you can make that out. I'm just trying to show you the damsons there. So what I try to do is anything with because uh, of this sort of damp and quite humid uh, you, you quite often get problems with fungal disease like brown rot and stuff like that uh, those look all right but I just tend to have a look around when I've got time anything like that I'm just gonna drop off anyway so remove those before they get a chance to get uh, fungal infection and uh, anything with brown rot just pull it off get rid of it don't let it um, spread really that's that's the thing with us I've got one more cut of comfrey to do 
and then I took, uh, I've pruned all these summer fruit and raspberries out so all we need to do is just tie in the new canes at some point, there's no urgency anything that's not in the right place I can just dig up and when it's dormant move it again so I'll just finish with a shot of this multi-grafted apple tree I actually summer prune this and you can see that it's absolutely loaded that's uh, pause he says because he can't remember <laughs> I'll have to put it on the screen it's gone now false stuff red false stuff that's it and this one here that I'm leaving it's got a long extension growth on it because I want the cyan wood as to that one going up there they're both cider varieties and uh, so I might have to put some kind of support under there but that'll be good right anyway um, so thanks very much for watching guys as always I appreciate your kind comments and support give me a thumbs up please uh, hit the like button and the notification bell and if you're not subscribed it'd be great if you'd consider subscribing right we'll catch you later sorry to bring you back I couldn't resist just finishing with a clip I just noticed this fella in here uh, I'm assuming he got in so he could get out but just in case I'm gonna put a piece of wood in there so hopefully he'll be able to scramble his way out when he's ready to come out right leave it there